Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Q the A podcast, a show where we question the answers and answer the questions of things that we may or may not have once questioned or answered or not, or maybe we thought about Ooh. or dreamed about. Yes. So this week we're going to talk about, it's, it's a seemingly new religion, however it has ancient roots, and it is called Ekankar. Uh, I hadn't heard of Ekankar for until recently, maybe uh, a couple months ago when you told me about it. Not a lot of people have heard of Ekankar. Yeah, that's true. I, I heard about it through word of mouth probably, I don't know, five about eight years ago. And it was real interesting, so I went to go check it out. I went to the church, and I read a, a book from the, the founder, Mr. Paul Twitchell. Um, now, and now, but recently they've been running uh, TV advertisements, um, like on History Channel during like Ancient Aliens and stuff. And uh, here it's a it's a quick little thirty second ad. I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you right quick. Discover how past lives, dreams, and soul travel can help you step out of the crowd and master your spiritual destiny. By looking within, you can explore your dreams, past and present relationships, and gain valuable insights to improve the quality of your life every day. If you would like to discover spiritual truth through past lives, dreams, and soul travel, then call 1-800-LOVE-GOD and receive your free copy of Ekankar, Ancient Wisdom for Today. 1-800-LOVE-GOD. Discover how uh -oh. past lot discover how pa ah. discover how past lot <laughs> <laughs> So that's the little 30 second Ekankar commercial they've been running on television which is interesting there They literally are a corporation. I'm not sure if they have a tax break or not. But they're I'm introducing sure they do. uh I guess if they're literally a religion um they got uh, some interesting stuff past lives soul travel and um what's the other thing oh yeah dreams yeah dreams is what their main concentration is yeah a lot of dream stuff one of the one of the people that i was watching on youtube who got involved in ek and car said that um she had like a like a really crazy mystical experience when she first joined ek and car where they said that she they would visit her in her dreams and literally that night she had a dream where Paul Twitchell like met her in her dream, or, or some one of oh, her wow. spirit guides, or something met her in the dream. Like it was wild. She said it was like the best dream she'd ever had, and there she got involved in Ekankar, and that yeah, that was the pinnacle of her time at Ekankar. But <laughs> oh, it got worse. It went downhill. It, it went downhill. <laughs> so yeah, some people label this group as a as a cult, much like the. The Scientology group, and and actually the founder, Mr. Paul Twitchell, which of course he says he's not a founder. He says he's the the modern day living Eck master, who passed away in 1971, by the way. But he um he he claims to have revealed this like ancient truth that is predates even like human existence or or even reality or whatever. Um, it's called the light, and it's called the religion of the light and sound of God. And what it is considered as a, as a certain type of spiritual path, they, of course, believe it to be the most direct and efficient path straight to God. But um, they say any religion is pretty much okay with them as long as you focus on, you know, the truth and, and all that. They're not really concerned with, like, a lot of sin. They, they, they're more like karma than sin, you know. Hmm. Um. The, the purpose of Ekankar is to make God an everyday reality in your life. And you actually, in Ekankar, you're not a physical being. You know, you're a spirit. You're, a, you're the soul. And you have God knowledge within you. They say that you're, the, you're actually a, like a, a spark off of the divine light. And you're a co-creator with God. You're co-creating your reality and God and everything together. Um, as the soul, you have the, you have the God knowledge within the teachings of the Ek will awaken the knowledge and the love of, for the divine things that are already in your heart. And so basically like the Ek is like the, the, the Holy spirit. Some of it kind of has Christian type things and some of it's got kind of like a lot of Hindu and some yeah, of it's kind of science fiction. Or I, I, 
I was, yeah, seriously. I mean, I was, li- I was like listening to podcasts so, on Ekman Carter Day, and uh, there's one, there's a podcast. There's only one podcast that I found, and I found it on iTunes, but it's current. Um, all the downloads are, are brand new, but I listened to like three or four of them. They all sound like uh, Buddhism to me. Like every single one of them was uh, meditation, you know, soul travel. It really is basically what I would say is, is meditation and trying to reach enlightenment or whatever, you know. It's kind of a different name for enlightenment. Uh, dreams uh, are like spiritual. That was on Buddhism. I think those are your spirit masters or whatever. You're getting in contact. You know, spirit guides or angels are very yeah. similar. Like angels, right? You know, they're all humanoid guides. And of course, some people don't trust them and they think they're like demons disguised as the light. I think you and I had a conversation about Ekankara once. And you you described it as maybe a Buddhist like or, or taking a lot of uh, knowledge from other different religions and kind of putting them together and making Ekankar. Yeah, that's exactly what it it kind of is. Which the guy you know the founder Paul Twitchell claims that yeah it's he says that it's kind of it's kind of in reverse. All of he says Ekankar teaches like the true original truth and then. All the other religions are like later, so they just have like elements of of the true and the original truth. Um, of course, he says that he's the uh, quote unquote, you know, living prophet um, who revealed this ancient truth to us in the uh, '60s. Um, now, Ekankar teaches that the soul is eternal. It also teaches that the soul exists because God loves it, and soul is on a journey of self and God realization. Spiritual unfoldment can be accelerated through the conscious contact with the Ek, the divine spirit. Um, and it says, yeah, the teachings of, of, of the Ek define the nature of soul more carefully than any other current religions on the planet. Um, <laughs> so this is the, like, they say this is the best ever or current <laughs> revelation of truth. And, and we got a commercial yeah, I was listening. So, Paul, you think is Paul Twitchell? You think the person that I was listening to on my podcast? I think we were talking about it before the this podcast no, so started. But. The, the current guy is named Harold Klimp. Okay, uh, we'll get into that little story of the leadership and how that went down. But um, yeah, he's been in since like eighty one, and he's getting a little older now. But yeah, so basically, our entire life has been the same guy. He's like the Pope of Ekankar. You know what I mean? Okay, he's okay. the living Ek master. Also known as the Mahanta. The Mahanta. <laughs> Mahanta. I, I kind of like almost, that. almost sounds Indian, right? It, it does sound Indian. Um, he, and a lot of stuff. So he gets, he gets uh, accused of plagiarism and copying, like you said, mixing sure. and swirling. And in some cases, I think some of his spiritual texts that he wrote are, are thought to be like actual, like li- literal plagiarism. Like whole pages just completely copied. <laughs> so, and, and that may be true. I'm not defending the guy. I'm not, you know, I'm just talking about Eck and Carr, much like it, we did with our Scientology episode, right? Right, sure. And you'll see how this kind of mirrors Scientology now. Um, let's see. We'll get back into the beliefs of the past lives, the dreams, and the soul travel. But uh, we also want to talk about the founder, Mr. Paul Twitchell. Yes. So Jacob Paul Twitchell, born in October 22nd, 1908. Wow. He was the first official living Ek master slash Mahanta. Uh, his true spiritual name, you know, he, he wanted to know his true name was uh, Pedar Sask or something like that. It's a very strange yeah. spelling. Now, other people argue that he, he's lied about his past a lot and they say he's a scammer and a con artist and, they say he was possibly born anywhere from like 1908 to 1922. But the Library of Congress, since he has like books documented, they have his official uh, birth date stated at 1908. So around the 1950, he was introduced to Mr. L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology and Dianetics. And in 1950, I mean, Hubbard was just like a, a science fiction author yeah. writing like pulp fiction. Which is funny pieces. as hell. Like when I first heard that he was a science fiction author and like the head of a religion, I just started laughing. Like, of course he made it all up. 
Like, yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, they said that he made a bet with um, uh, that other science, science fiction author, uh, Heinlein, uh -huh. to who could write, who could create the most like profitable religion or create a religion and have it take off or whatever. So oh, L. Ron Hubbard. Been a big bet. Well, so yeah, and there's, there's like in a bar making this bet. So I, I don't know what the, the amount of money was, but basically L. Ron Hubbard wrote the book Dianetics and um, Heinlein wrote, um, what's it? The Stranger in a Strange Land, which is a really good book, by the way. It's real culty and spiritual as, as well, hmm. but in a real practical sense. And it's real blasphemous too to certain people. <laughs> Almost obviously intentionally, but um, what were we? Oh yeah, L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, so he he's somehow he met up with L. Ron Hubbard, started practicing. You know, back then it wasn't even called Scientology yet. It wasn't even a religion at that time. It was just like this kind of cool like thought system where you could kind of go through like a an auditing session and and you know remove the engrams from your brain and become mm -hmm. clear. And um, so. Back he when actually, science was still like, you know, so so half. Right. This was people. thought. This was almost thought to be like cutting edge science in its day. I guess you could say, sure. right? Um, so he he got involved with with uh, yeah L. Ron Hubbard. He also investigated a number of uh, diverse spiritual movements, and was an avid reader of spiritual, philosophical, and religious and occult books. But he was one of the first people to go, to go clear. To reach the state of clear, which is, I guess, kind of impressive, if you will. And that was around 59. So in, a, in a, around... Um, yeah, I mean, if you look at the pyramid for going clear, that is pretty impressive. That's true. Now, he was also a, a member of... Uh, it's called Premananda Giri's Self-Realization Church um, of Absolute Monism, which was an offshoot of that one I was telling you about, the Parahansa Yogananda's Self-Realization mm -hmm. Fellowship. So he was into that too, all this kind of cool yoga, you know, reincarnation, wheel of samsara type stuff, This all this Eastern mysticism. Um, he lived at the church actually for a while and, and edited its periodical publication called The Mystic Cross. Uh, but then in 1955, he formally separated from his wife and left the church um, so that yeah, so he, he got divorced from wife number one. He was introduced to yoga. Uh, actually, that's I just that came before, obviously. Um, so in 1968, it's funny he had some beef with L. Ron Hubbard, and and he and his church became listed on their suppressive person and uh, gr groups list. <laughs> so he's like a like the cult list. He's on the cult. He's, list. An, he's on the cult, the cult blacklist of suppressive people. He's an SP. Okay, so this what, had, what you have to do to get on that list, though, like oh, you got to piss off yeah, Scientology. Yeah. We yeah. might be on the list. Shit. We might be on yeah. the list. Uh, I don't think anybody's watching. Now you say, at this point. what was it you said the other day? You walked into a Scientology. I did go into again? the Scientology center just the other day, and we can. Uh, <laughs> Go further into that in a minute because I got actually some publications from them. But they, they wanted me to buy a $30 book and I thought about it, but then I figured, well, if it's meant to be, then the book will come to me somehow for free. That's what I'm challenging. God's will. Yeah, I'm challenging God's will. And if not, then that's fine. The and they, yeah, they got, they weren't as interested in me when they realized I was just going to like talk about Scientology and not uh, spend any money. <laughs> and I also dropped some other – I also mentioned some other things that they might not have liked. I mentioned that I had watched the HBO documentary. Um, you know, they, they just didn't – they were just kind of like, yeah, get out of here, man. They don't um, want people who uh, explore. No, yeah, that's the thing. They, Yeah, they don't want people who want to know a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, they just want people who are like, pick that one thing, and that's the fundamental truth, and it just works perfect. Yeah, you know, and they're like, clearly, Eon K. Grissom is not going to fit that mold. You know, I'm not going to give them their, my money. Um, oh yeah, so this week I've got a, a really good brew. It's uh, the Samuel Smith Brewery, which is a very old brewery over in England, and this is their um, organic chocolate stout, and it's bottle a malt beverage with. Yeah, it's it's a kind of an interesting bottle. It's a it's a larger bottle, it's an old school bottle. Um, 
it's actually it's list labeled here. Let's see. Brewed with water from the original brewery, well sunk in 1758, the gently roasted organic chocolate malt and real organic cocoa used in this ale impart a delicious and smooth and creamy character with inviting deep flavors and delightful finish. I would agree. <laughs> it's delicious. You have Sound been like, marketed too. I'm like the Martha Stewart of beer. All right, guys, it's fantastic. <laughs> So yeah, that's tasty. Flowery taste. It's a taste. Brilliant taste. overtones and undertones and silver tones. Yeah, this one's good because it it tastes chocolatey, but not like real sweet. I mean, it's, it's a little sweet, sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's got the nice organic type font on there, and the cool little berries and cocoa. Oh yeah, it's so pretty. It's good. Samuel Smith's a great brewery, by the way. I've had some good good beers from them throughout the years. Okay, so um. Mr. Paul Twitchell, and you can look up pictures of this guy. We're going to post a photo gallery on uh, facebook.com forward slash QTA podcast. <laughs> so he married uh, Gail Atkinson in 1964, and he began some serious writing and compiling materials about his new teaching that he called Ekenkar. And he gave his first lecture. At the time, he was call it, calling soul travel a bilocation technique. It was like sort of a little thesis that he had or whatever. He was going around giving seminars and lectures on this stuff. By, by late 1965, they had together founded the Ekenkar Corporation as well as the Illuminated Press or the Illuminated Way Press. Regist and then both companies were registered in California. San Diego, I believe. So his second wife encouraged what, what he calls a spark within him to do more of these writings. And of course, these a lot of these writings are what have been accused of being plagiarized. At first, he said that, um, that these were all brand new writings, but then he revealed that they were actually ancient science that predated all of the other religious belief systems and human existence. Um, he, ancient okay, religion. and he also, he included some prophecies that he made. He predicted the Vietnam war would end in 1968 and that Linda Johnson would be reelected, uh, president, which neither of those were correct. Unfortunately, <laughs> That's right. wah, wah, wah. Ding, ding. um, now Mr. Twitchell along the way, while he was working on revealing this ancient science of truth and mystical religion to the world. Um, he started. He had these visions and these dreams. The, he was visited by the Ek Master Rebazar Tars, <laughs> and um, we're gonna have a, a you know a lot of these pictures. You guys can Google search it and find these Ek Masters. They're these cartoon drawings, kind of look like '80s cartoon characters. I'll post a link under uh, in the comments. Yeah. Okay, in that's the, good. In the description below. I'll post. I'll post a link to that. Yeah. So like Rebazar Tars, kind of like this is kind of like. Maybe it's like a, it looks like a sixty-year-old black guy with like a beard, and he's like wearing a robe, like he's from like the you know I don't know tw two thousand years ago or something. And um, so he, of course, guided Paul Twitchell through the founding of the church. Um, now, si Paul Twitchell died of a heart attack in uh, nineteen seventy-one while he was attending a, a seminar, and his wife picked another guy, a member of the church, Mr. Darwin Gross, to run the church, and he was in from seventy-one to eighty-one. As the new living Ek Master slash Mahanta. It was a good run. It was a good run. It was a good run. Um, now, he started having health problems as well, and he he picked uh, appointed Mr. Harold Klimp, who is the current Mahanta slash living Ek Master. Now, I was listening to the podcast today, and there was one titled um, Ek and Car for the Animals. And oh, wow. I think they don't like uh, animal cruelty. Uh, probably. So, that's probably true. I think people are having health problems, but I guess they're still eating like cows and chickens and stuff. Well, they believe in karma, so they're probably just going to believe in the standard, um, you know, rebirth process that is how karma works, right? Like whatever you do, you're going to get the, the, the other side of that in your next life. Next life. has yeah, to yeah. balance out, right? Uh, so, when, so if you're eating as some if you're eating meat, I guess essentially you're eating some human that has been reborn as an animal. 
right? Sure. I guess. At w- at one time, anyway. Or we've all been all these things at one time, potentially. There's other stories where you you choose what you want to be when you come to Earth. So you right, can, you gotta you have to learn your lessons in uh, in your feelings, right? You have to feel all the emotions throughout your lifetime. So if you choose to go through the story of an animal, um, but I think you, I think in Buddhist teaching they say you evolve through the animals, and then you come to human life and you evolve through all the human emotions, and then you evolve to another like another planet or something. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of potentials in there. And then you got Kalpas, which are like 4,000 different rebirths. Mm-hmm. And they'll talk about like a thousand Kalpas or something, which is crazy. One of, the, one of the first people my dad hypnotized and went to their past lives. They had a thousand past lives, which is one of the most, I think it was the most he ever, he said he had ever, um, he'd ever found in a single human. Huh? <laughs> they had a thousand past lives. So he could, he could say he could say a phrase basically like uh uh what's the cause of your neck problem and it would instantly they would go back to that life where they had a problem with their neck that's causing their pain in this life or yeah or yeah. like it's pretty or, nice uh, you know they would have all would have some kind of respiratory problem and they would say well why did, he would say you know something while they're in her hypnosis like why does your child have a had respiratory issues and they would like instantly remember five past lives where they had a child that died of a smoke inhalation or something, you know, like that compounded in, in their, in their child in this life has the respiratory issue. Yeah. It would just pass on like the physical form. Like, yeah, manifests that karma. I wonder how Ekinkar uh, relates to that kind of. Um, well, they got a lot. I mean, like, like you were seeing, there's a lot of videos with that Harold Klimp guy talking about all kinds of topics. Um, and I've listened to a good bit of it. It's uh, it's kind of like soothing. I mean, some people argue that he's a little bit creepy. Um, he's kind of, you know, strange looking. Not like super strange looking, but I can see how people think he's a creepy. I've never met him in person. Now, what happened though? Okay, so he got appointed the new living Ek master, but the old guy, and somehow he came in and like, did like what the old guy said was like a hostile takeover or something and change the rules around so that nope, there's not a board of, of anybody making decisions anymore. Now it's, he's got like sole vote of everything. He's like the full dictator. So he's got like the control of the system. He's kind of like, you know, miscavige the Scientology leader. Um, now the guy Darwin grows to the second, Living Act Master, he went off and started a new organization called Adam, A-T-O-M, and that stands for the Ancient Teachings of the Masters, which he claims is truly carrying on carrying on the original teachings of, of Mr. Paul Twitchell. Now, how does it work in, uh, sci- in uh, I almost said Scientology, how does it work in Ekinkar? Okay, so you want to find God, right? So what you do is God's true name in Ekinkar well, not in Ekinkar, God's true name, they say in, in reality, is Hugh, H-U. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh. So what you do is you don't really pray. You kind of do like a meditation. They call it a prayer or a song to Hugh. And you just be like, take a deep breath and breathe out. Like, Hugh. And anyway, you just keep doing that over and over again. It's sort of like, oh, um, it's very similar. Almost yeah. you could say it's copying it. But what you do is you get a bunch of people in the room, and, and you're all they're all doing that in, in, in random intervals. And it just creates this kind of weird, like, frequency in the room. Because I went when I went to the church, we did it for about 15 minutes. We did this song to Hugh. Oh, and you do kind of have, like, yeah, and you do kind of have, like, weird kind of, uh, it kind of takes your mind and your yourself, you know, different places because it is it is a meditation, and you do get these like serious like vibrations that you're like tuning in with, as all these people around you are, you know, claim to be envisioning these uh these Ek Master spirit guides. Yeah, there's definitely something to a lot of these things because like once I was uh, sitting in front of the TV and I decided I was gonna, I had time, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a meditation, so I pulled up this meditation on YouTube on my smart TV. And uh, started playing it, and they said to you know, sit 
in the you know your legs crossed and sit up straight and put your hands together put your hands together like this and kind of you know poke your elbows out and uh <laughs> it's pretty hard to do with the tv of the uh video camera on my i my laptop here but basically hold it together and you close your eyes and you imagine energy going from your chest through your arms to the other arm and back into your chest through your you know in this big circle and you just imagine the light energy going through mm -hmm. and but that was after like 10 minutes of just sitting there still and having your eyes closed and man you could i could almost feel it going through like you could just start feeling this energy going through your arms and hitting your chest mm -hmm. and coming back through your arms and you could it was very smooth yeah it's like chi you, right you could, you could you definitely feel it like i was like holy crap what the hell is going on here so some would say that's chi. Some would call it, yeah, the Holy Spirit. Some would call it the ek. Um, so there's, some, there's definitely something going on with like body energy and like yeah, uh, third eye. You know, maybe I, I sure. told the story when I did a raw food cleanse for a while and then went into a juice fast where you just do juices and like it felt like I had a third eye like right here in the middle of my head. Like I could feel it. Huh. And uh, that was pretty crazy too. So I know it's there. Uh, it's like almost like That's your right. energy gets bumped up some, but uh, then I found out about DMT. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and then I started thinking, man, that was probably just like because I was eating plants you know, all the time, and there was probably something where like some DMT is slipping through, and I was just feeling pretty yep. euphoric. It's probably, probably true. Just was, yeah. No, but it was real so, to you. It was it was your reality. Yeah, there's I mean there's stories that I've heard from other raw foodists where like they just feel immense feelings of the entire spectrum all the time. Just like they never stop. Um, it was a one guy that I've Sounds followed. Good. That I haven't met yet, but um, he's a truck driver. He's one of the more famous guys in the juicing movement. And uh, he said he was like driving his truck one day, just like giving gratitude to the universe. And he felt this like cranking in the center of his chest just like a cranking and it took about three or four minutes, but then like emotion of love exploded out of his body. <laughs> and he, he said he couldn't, he couldn't even drive his car because he, and he was like sobbing down his face and everything. Um, huh. But it was, he said it's the most beautiful religious experience he'd ever had in his life just because he was on a fast and he's given great, he's giving gratitude. He's trying to like, love the universe right sure the spirit is kind of woo woo stuff there universe the gives back but he had a, he had a reaction to it so yeah totally that's pretty cool but so you gotta wonder if, if, if ekin car is trying to um build people towards like just a third eye kind of buddhist kind of stuff you know like enhancing your energy and reducing the damage to the planet things like that um, you know, it's weird. They don't really seem to be too big. In, I mean, I'm sure a lot of them have their own uh, personal views on things. Um, they're, they're pretty open to people being able to believe whatever they want. But I'm sure personally they have a lot of beliefs. Like what was interesting is the people when I talked to them, I was telling them about other, other religions and other stuff I had heard. And, and they weren't at all like trying to talk me out of any of it. If anything, they were trying to uh, encourage me to like go check out everything I can possibly check out, you know. Um, so back to one of those podcasts I was listening to today, um, the speaker. That's why I was I asked the original question because I was going to try to get into this. But the, the speaker that I was listening to said, was talking about religions and he was had no qualms about saying he this was a religion and um you know they're trying to spread it worldwide and talking about where the locations were and then he said uh he said religion just like ekankar is just a room and you need to visit all the rooms so he's basically saying like you need to go to catholicism for a little while you need to go into buddhism for a little while hindu for a little while jainism uh you know southern baptist and then come Athe back to be, try to be atheist too right yeah, so he's like visit. He said, "Visit all the rooms, feel all the energies, come back." Yeah, all exactly all the energies. Um, now they they call it the the religion of the light and sound of God, and they say that the God yeah connects through us to us through light and sound. Yeah. So 
And that makes kind of sense, like light energy and, uh, like I said, the sound vibrations of the song to Hugh. <laughs> there's, um, a, there's, there's a CD that you can buy for Song to Hugh, and it just you can just play it and just listen to the CD. And yeah. A lot of people... A lot of people chanting. There's actual songs, like folk type songs. Yeah, that's the jam. Ekinkar jam bands, man. I now, liked they, it. I was the they had like classical music, and uh, I was like, man, I'm gonna buy that junk. Let's see what they had on iTunes. Oh yeah, I wonder if is Spotify is carrying the uh, Ekinkar soundtrack. <laughs> check it out. <laughs> um, but it is called the Sound of Hugh soundtrack or something like that. Sound of Hugh. Now, so they're, they're all about dreams, right? They really try to focus on their dreams and try to remember their dreams and write their dreams down. They say that your dreams are prophetic. You know, they'll, they'll tell you the future, basically. Uh, but a lot of times you have the dream months before, obviously, that future event where you'll, where you'll actually understand the dream. And if you don't write the dream down, when it happens, you won't remember that that dream happened, so you won't have the, the teaching in place. And, of course, you are your own dream interpreter, they, they tell you that. And they also tell you that basically like God or your higher self, you know, because you're co-creator with God. So that you and God are trying to tell your, th your third dimensional, your earthling human self stuff. But for some reason it can't get through in this like earthly reality. So it, 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 they have to slip it through through these like bizarre, weird dreams. And since they're so weird, like the, the teaching kind of slips through to you. So if you're really paying attention and, and tuned in and channeled in, you'll you'll get that that bit of information. It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a big puzzle, like a lifelong puzzle, you know, where little bits are slipping through, and you're writing them down and keeping a journal. And you have to really put in the effort and the focus to deserve it. You know, there's no way to really cheat the system. You just have to go about it the way the way you're supposed to. Now let's talk. Let's um. I'm going to play a little a little segment here, a little audio segment for Mr. Paul, or sorry, Mr. Harold Klimp. Here we go. He's talking about the, the ways of spiritual dreaming. A little hard to... When you finish the day and you go to bed to get some rest, the human or the physical body sleeps. But you, as soul... As everybody else who goes to sleep, soul leaves the human body and goes out in the other worlds, worlds and takes up life there and continues life there, I must say. Because we measure everything here on earth by the waking and the sleeping state of the human body. Therefore, we assume that when we go to sleep, we're just starting a dream or we end a dream. But actually, it's tapping in to the expanded awareness of soul as it is existing, as we are existing on inner planes, simultaneous with existence on the earth. A little hard to understand, but then again, soul yeah. is not a two or three being. Soul is multidimensional because it shares all the aspects of God. And that I it turn your side down a little bit there. At all okay. times, at all places at the same time. Anyway, that didn't go so well. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, it'll, it'll be on the audio version of the podcast. Weird editing on that. Um, yeah. So yeah, dreams. They, they got some pretty cool stuff on dreams. They also got soul travel. Is another uh, big thing where you can literally go off in your dream or your. Um, well, obviously in your dream, we do that anyway. But when you go and do the song to Hugh, you can go into the, these kind of meditative states where you'll literally have like out of body experiences and travel to like other dimensions and planes. They don't really talk about dimensions; they talk about a lot of different planes, which is kind of the same thing. Right. Probably, probably exactly the same thing. Um, uh, and then, of course, you yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll you'll come across these different guide guide folk, the Ek Masters. There's a guy I really like to follow uh, in the '70s. His name is Albert Taylor. But he was on uh, Coast to Coast with, uh, uh, um, what's his name? Bell, Art Bell, in like the 90s. Yeah. Uh, but he he says that he could, he had this sleeping mantra where he could like uh, train himself to have these out-of-body astral projection experiences in his sleep, in his dreams. 
Oh, yeah. And I think it was born out of Ekenkar. Like now, oh, okay. it, now that we were looking into Ekenkar, I'm thinking, well, that, yeah. might, that guy must have been in the Ekenkar religion because he's basically saying exactly the same things that Ekenkar people do. Yeah, and you know, I mean, and travel. Right. I mean, it could very well be or something very similar. I mean, these are all just human experiences, right? Yeah, Art, uh, Art Bell said that he tried to do this uh, out of body experience and it worked. Like he, uh, it oh, took, wow. took like two, two or three days and he actually had this out of body experience where he was looking at himself in the bed. And then he went off, well, he went off somewhere for a minute and came back. But as soon as he thought about how he was out of his body, he was slammed back into his body just as quick. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I I met quite a few people who told me all kind of far out stories, and you know, some of them seemed a little kooky. I'm not going to lie, but uh, at the same time, they seemed pretty jazzed about their experiences they were talking about. Yeah. Now these guides. Now I remember them telling me that there's like over a thousand or something, but on the website they've got like I don't know ten. And if you look at this list, they're pretty funny. Uh, the top guy, I like him a lot. He's a Fubi Quans. Like I'm gonna just I'm just gonna pronounce it however I think. And there's all this backstory to these guys. They tell you like where they originally were and what dimension or country or whatever. And, and then you, you got, got you got your name Eon from. Oh yeah, your, your spiritual projection. Yeah, no, I did, and I guess just like Paul Twitchell, I'm sort of like just learning all these different religions and sort of swirling them all together myself, and not even religions, just different things I hear and techniques and recommendations and experiences from other people. So, uh, yeah, I kind of inadvertently asked for my true name. I guess my if I become a, uh, an Ek master, then I'll be uh, Eon K. Grissom or something. I don't know. At least Eon, right? Well, Eon's the uh, – that's true. It would, just, it would just be Eon as far as I know. But K. Grissom yeah, has more earthly roots. Um, yes. <laughs> but we got, Go, we got Gop, Gopal Das. He looks kind of like an Aryan Mormon or something. Uh, like a white sheet. Are you are you looking at these uh, Dookie Royale? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got K Kata Daki, who's like this kind of Russian spy looking chick. Yeah. And L Lai Z. Now this is kind of comical, but like these people do keep take this very seriously. This is like these are like legitimate guides. Now. Lai, Z. Lai Z is Chinese or J Japanese or. He's like an Asian kind of Fu Manchu. Um, and you got Paul Twitchell, who is also uh, actually a correctly named Pedar Zask. And uh, there's his picture of him. Yeah, all races, him. all races uh, re represented here. Oh yeah, clearly not racist. Um, then you got Rami Nuri, who's uh, like some kind of Indian wisdom yeah, guy. Yeah. And you got Rabazar Tars, who just kind of looks like some dude that you. I can't tell if he's got like a robe or a hoodie there. Might be a Middle Eastern. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got Tawar Manaji, and I guess he's like some old wise. It, like African looking guy African, yeah. and y'all yabble scop scopy sakabi sakabi now they all look very human so I don't know what their belief is on like extraterrestrial other type of beings or maybe they just appear to us this way because we're in the human form uh, I don't I don't know I haven't dug that deep into Ek and car and I don't know if I'm willing looks like, to looks like the same artist did all of them oh it's definitely yeah yeah, no, totally. Uh, maybe the Paul Twitchell's different. Or sorry, the Pedar Zask. Bless you. But, I bet, if but yeah, we, them, I bet if you Google searched and researched all of these specific names, you'd come up with a ton of information that would just like uh, be amazing. Why can't they just have a Steve? I mean, why do they all got to have like a crazy name? Oh, it's not as impressive. It doesn't guess, seem yeah. as authentic. Lies C is probably Japanese for one dude you know I don't, that's probably a real name in chinese <laughs> yeah, they, i mean they all could be real names for all we know rami but, nuri but what do we know i mean and who is this paul twitchell this mysterious guy i mean the thing is there's not much video or there's no video for him because it's like he died back in the day when there wasn't a lot of video footage and it was just a small time little little religion um, um, I think I, I thought I found a um, uh, playlist with Paul Twitchell. Oh yeah, huh? Yeah. Maybe I need to look that up then. Now there's this other cool thing, um, another cool little audio snippet we got from Mr. Uh, uh, Harold Klimp again, and this one's called "Insights into Soul Travel and Astral Projection." So here we go. 
One of the advantages of Ekankarathi out here again in the 20th century is that there are so many of you seated right here in the audience who in one way or another, once or twice in your lifetime at least, who have had some kind of experience that the average person doesn't have. Near-death experiences, out-of-the-body, soul travel, astral projection, sometimes seeing visions and all this. Most people, I would say in most cases, it's better people don't have these experiences all the time because the people who do are generally unable to handle it and are very much out of balance. But to most of you who have had these experiences, they came unannounced, often before you even heard about Ekankar. And then you wonder, what happened to me? Am I going crazy? So, I think he's going crazy. <laughs> he's, he's cray cray. <laughs> he cray with the bay. So, I mean, I don't know. I wonder if our listeners care about Ekankar. <laughs> we've taught we've taught them all about Ekankar more than they probably ever wanted to know. Of course, some of our listeners might have just be so excited and they're going to look it up and they've got a whole new bit of studying to do. So, ho I hope it goes some, that way because I I, I I got into it for a little while just to study it. I was uh, I went to meetup.com just to see if there was a meetup in the area for Ekankar and there is oh. in Atlanta anyway. Well, no, there's not even a meetup. They got a church in Atlanta. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, it's over in uh, East Cobb off Roswell Road, right there by Mazzie's. Chant Hugh for Peace and Upliftment. That's in uh, Atlanta Spiritual Experiences Group. Yep. So, we should go We should go uh, this Sunday. Uh, I'll go. Yeah, you want to go? Uh, I want to go to uh, Harry Krishna's, too. Okay, we should do that. We should start going on Sundays to these uh, religious institutions. Harry Krishna's, I think their main's on Saturday afternoon or morning or something. It's on. The, is it the one on Ponce? Yeah, Ponce de Leon. Yes. For our listeners who are familiar with Atlanta, that's a classic downtown Atlanta street. <laughs> Ponce de Leon. Yes, that's where Ponce. all the yep. two people were shot today on Ponce de Leon Avenue. Yeah, that's where Murder Kroger. <laughs> the famous yep. murder Kroger. Now, speaking of murder, did you see these two people that got shot? Um, oh, online? man. Yeah, did you see it looked like Wolfenstein? He, like, videotaped himself shooting them. Yeah, did too. you see it? It looked like Doom. It was, like, the first-person shooter hand. Right. Then he just, like, pow, pow. And, it, I mean, you know, obviously I don't want to be offensive or, or anything, but it kind of had a weird fake, like, false flaggy kind of feel to it. I am just want to say it. Yeah, that guy was a dick, no matter what. Is it real, though? That's the question. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Alex Jones, of course, was saying that uh, you know that could that could be a fake video. Could be. Like, you don't see like, any any evidence of any actual thing there. I don't see getting the holes going in them or anything. But uh, no, the, like the beheadings. Remember last week there was a good video that came out showing the beheadings were all fake. Yeah, the beheading videos um, are often oftentimes when I've watched them they. Yeah, they're like, I'm like, well, that could have been faked. And they're like, oh, but it wasn't. I'm like, well, why didn't they just like show it the way? Because they, they don't just show it. They give it, make it all like, you know, it's not like presented like, I don't know. It's just, it's just fishy, it's always, man. It's, it's always fishy. from right in front. Yeah, it's always from right in front. They're always wearing the same things. Uh, the people that are having their head their heads cut off are very chill about it. Uh, nobody's screaming and yelling. There, but there's a some some kind of whistleblower sent in a sent a video of him like of a of him like taking video of the set as they're cutting the heads off <laughs> like the TV set. There's plenty of people there doing the video. Huh, that's funny. And, uh, yeah, it was released by the CIA like a week before. Hey, so the um, bad lip reading put out their um, Republican debate video. It was pretty good. Uh, yes, I saw that. <laughs> I think it I posted that on our uh, Facebook page. As did I. Oh, did you? We both posted it? Yeah. Oh, man. We're duplicating. <laughs> Cue the A, because we like the same stuff. That's right, because it's brilliant. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, what are you going to do? 
<laughs> so, okay, I guess we're done with Ekin Car, man. I mean, that's people can look it up if they're interested. Did you? Do you have an Ekin Car book Bible? Anything? I did. Ha- I did have. Um, they don't really have like a, a certain book. They have a bunch of different books that Paul Twitchell wrote, uh, and I had a couple of them, but I threw them in the ocean with a lot of other stuff at one oh, time yeah, yeah. in a pur- purging session. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, I read the book. It was cool, man. It was it was very definitely talking a lot about like the the journeys around the different planes, soul travel techniques, and explaining what reality is. Um, you know, I like to I like to kind of take elements of it, and then of course you swirl it with a little Seth materials and a little Buddhism, <laughs> and uh, you know, yeah, there's, little, there's no direct a little mysticism in general, I guess. Even Christians have like these channelers from God, right? Sure, prophets are talking but, straight uh, to God, man. Ekinkar doesn't have any channelers. It's just information. Well, everybody's. I mean, you Ekinkar teaches you how to ch- have to channel your your own stuff. How to like look within spirit. yourself and co-create your own reality with these guides and God and stuff. Yeah, spirit guides could be channelers. Just depends on how you look at it. Yeah, man, spirit guides are freaking. Yeah, of course, it's all the same. It's all it's the just same, weird, man. man. Like, all the possibilities we already know about are in Ekinkar. Like, uh, he, there you would just think that a religion that would be successful would have something new. Yeah, you're right. Maybe he doesn't bring just... like anything to the table. Like Scientology brings something new. You know, if, if God is so complicated, yeah, right. But maybe God's not complicated. Maybe that's what he's trying to say. Because he, yeah, he's saying that it predates all the other religions. It's like the tr- the original source truth. Hmm. So that's why. Uh, it, that's why that 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 that. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> no, but that's why it's uh it is the way it is. I mean, that's why the other religions have different elements of it. And then uh, you know, it's all about this like journey. And you know, they're very optimistic of course because anything that happens bad is just, you know, it's just to le- to learn a lesson. It's just all part of our Ekinkar journey. Back mm-hmm. to God, my, through the light and sound my, of God. My religion would be like uh lightning is the spiritual energy of the planet and you need to have lightning strike your house on your rod on your lightning rod strike gain, my rod to gain spiritual enlightenment hey god strike my rod god <laughs> Q. oh yeah now we didn't mention that ek ekinkar their their logo is ek and it is like the worst logo ever yeah it's stupid it is so stupid. And actually, when I first learned about it and saw that, I was almost like, that was almost a deal breaker, like right there. <laughs> yeah, right there, and there. I yeah. mean, they might as well just use Comic Sans as their font. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. They should just go ahead and do that and go all the way with it because it's it is that bad. And I hate uh, it. For, I hate it. For I also them. hate when people say, um, "Go read the Eck." Like they're like Eck Worship Service and all this stuff. Yeah, E C K. Eck. I hate when people say that. Well, because Eck and Car is kind of a long, annoying word, I guess. So you hate the Eck, huh? Yeah, but I mean, they call them. They're known as Eckus. I mean, Christians don't say come to the Christian worship service. They just say come to service, right? Come to church. That's true. Or they have to say Eck Worship. It's very specific. So last Sunday they had a meet, uh, yeah, eleven o'clock meeting at the X Center. We missed it. I guess they don't have it every Sunday. You know what though? Uh, when I looked up the Harry Krishnas, they have like live streaming TV, twenty four oh, hours wow. a day. Oh man! So I that's think, cool. and that's just at Atlanta. That's just the Atlanta branch. I'm pretty certain that uh, if you you were in New York City or something, you can. There's a. Yeah, the one Lots up in uh, up in uh, Lilburn is pretty impressive. You ever seen that? That may be the one that was live streaming, because all the Harry Krishnas I think are connected somehow. Um, you know, in a, in a major city, they'll all be connected somehow, like financially. Okay. So that none of them, so that none of them fail, if their attendance gets low or something. Yeah, we gotta have that revenue, man. That's what I would do if I was in. Uh, have that revenue. I was part of Harry Krishna's or something like that. I would form a financial bond. 
Yeah, why not, right? Um, hey, so uh, yeah, I got I found this uh, cool new uh, playlist on Spotify. You probably dig it. What is it? It's called uh, Beach Disco. Ooh. Yeah, it's just a bunch of like lounge music, essentially. Beach disco. Beach disco. Yeah, it's got like five volumes of this. Yeah, it is a new one. Yeah, otherwise, I'm trying to think about my week. I bought a, a new camera. I bought a, a used laptop. Uh, yeah, I saw you harassing your friends about what camera would be the best. Yeah, I, I was harassing my friends. And they kind of helped me and kind of didn't. But at least they tried. <laughs> <laughs> um so what camera did you get well it hasn't come in the mail yet but it's the nikon d7100 with like some uh, add-on lenses and you know accessories yeah. so that's gonna be it's apparently pretty amazing and it better freaking be for the amount of money that thing costs what are you gonna take pictures of um you gonna go out and get artsy with it yeah i'm gonna be totally artsy man Take you know family, just all kind of stuff. Just document everything. Open up a whole new realm of of art in my world as a photographer. Change career path, you know all that stuff. I gotta, where'd you go, Jan? I'm right here. Oh, he dropped out. For I'm here. I'm here. So anyway, what were you saying? I don't know. Oh, I got a really cool Sony camera once and took it on vacation. I took 6,000 pictures while I was on yeah, vacation. That's crazy. That was back when they had an 8 megabit, 8 megabyte uh, 8 drives. gig card? No. No. Megabytes. Meg? Yeah, and like each picture was like it was 1 megabyte. Was terrible quality. And Oh, I think that I had like a very expensive memory stick. It was like 32 megabytes. Hmm. And, yeah, yeah like this 2002. thing wasn't that long ago. No, it wasn't. I remember I bought your little Pentium 2 laptop from you. Yeah, my gateway. Yeah, way back in the day. That gateway think, cost me $3,200. Man, that's insane. Bought. I bought it from you for like 200 <laughs> bucks, I think. It had a DVD on it, player on it. It had a DVD player, which was a big benefit, but it couldn't really play the DVD that well. No. Um, and then I get... <laughs> And then I, I I passed it on to my parents, and they used it for a couple of years until it finally died. <laughs> it got it got some life out of it, man. It was a cute little laptop. So I just bought a, a yeah a laptop for I paid 180 bucks for like this nice little 12 inch uh, Dell Latitude huh. with like a solid state 120 gig hard drive, four gigs of RAM, oh. Windows That's 7. Pretty nice. Pro. Yeah, pretty sweet. Assuming it works. 120 bucks. 180 bucks i5 processor you know i mean it's three years old it's pretty sweet is it three years old with a solid state already dang yeah i don't know if it's been added or what but yeah you know what i think i have a gateway with a solid state drive in it too solid states are amazing i think it's a 60 gigger yeah i was looking at this little uh this this even older one with a 64 gig solid state for 100 bucks but i just said ah what's another 80 bucks for like more horsepower you know what i mean yeah, the one we have is, uh, I think it is a gateway too, uh, or a Dell or something like that. And it worked phenomenally at the in the beginning. It's got Windows 7 on it. Mm -hmm. it, it um, but now, like, it's kind of jacked up, up with all the Windows 7 updates, it's just slow. Like, there's nothing installed on it. It, it huh. was just meant for internet only. A bunch of bull crap. So, I don't know what the heck, man. All these Windows 7 updates. <laughs> Killing my computers. Freaking updates, man. Slowing my crap down. Making my stuff run like a freaking Pentium 2. Of course, <laughs> Pentium 2 used to be amazing. When Pentium 1 was out and Pentium 2 came out, it just blew your mind. Yeah, it's all about the Pentiums. It's all about the Pentiums, baby. What? What? So, um, I guess, I don't know, you got anything else to follow up with this week, Mr. Dookie Royale? Ooh. I don't know. Not really. I'm feeling kind of tired, actually. I've been kind of fighting some sickness i think lately yeah that's why we're recording late this week yeah it's a late week and you know fall's moving in <laughs> it's weird here because it was like 100 degrees one day and 60 the next 
and it's going to be like 60 every morning for the next five days. Like, what? How does that work out? Well, I don't know. Just moves in in like a single day. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, really it's have, weird. We might not even have a fall. It might just go like 60 to 30. Yeah, it probably will. Have a cold front come in, be snow all year, all, all winter. That dang global warming. But, Freaking yeah. But you know what I haven't seen uh, lately is chemtrails. Oh, really? Yeah. If chemtrails supposedly happen in air conditions, you know, like the contrails extend differently in the con- in the uh, different air conditions of the uh, upper atmosphere. Huh. That's what they say the reason is for having contrail- contrails or chemtrails. Chemtrails. If that was true, we'd still have them. They'd be there every day. Huh. But we haven't had them in like five days now. Which is nice. The the sky is blue again. Sky is blue. It's nice Christmas in the air. It's warm, but kind of, kind of not too too bad. In the morning, it's kind of brisk, which is <laughs> nice. So, yeah, 60, 67 degrees <laughs> for some people. I mean, in New York City, it's already in the forties. So I, mean, I was talking to somebody, and they were like, "I just came back from New York, and it was like forty five in the morning." Already. It's yeah. only August. I guess what, 26? Uh, I hate it when it's too hot and I hate it when it's too cold. I like it just but, right. I'm, I like Goldilocks. Goldilocks weather. I'm just, I'm surprised more people don't live like in Atlanta or in this like area. Because if you look across the United States, it's like Atlanta is the only one on this plane. You know, all the way across. Maybe Phoenix or something like that, but Phoenix is in a desert. But uh, oh, like it's a perfect location. that We don't get hit by hurricanes. Yeah, we have a summer, a fall, a <laughs> winter. In a spring. We have like Winter, almost every... spring, summer, or fall. Some people just go directly from 80 degree summer to 30 degree winter. But that, but that's what their reality is, I guess. But anyway, Atlanta's like, it just seems like it's the perfect place for everything. Like you can't, there's not going to be a natural disaster here. There's no earthquake fault lines that are big enough to have a huge impact. It's hmm. just a, and it's 30 minutes from the mountains. I think, uh, 30 minutes or like a couple hours from the beach. Al Bielik said that in the future, it's going to be like three miles from the coast. That's right. That's right. Florida be gone. Yeah. The whole map's going to be different. If if global warming happens to tomorrow, like the, the the tipping point happens and all the ice starts melting and it takes it two years to melt, we'll still be under the line. So that's right. That's right. People live. We'll live. Macon will be underwater, but Atlanta, Screw making. Maybe we're the Atlantis. Maybe that's what they renamed us for. That's we're right. We are Atlantis. Atlantis. We are. We always have been. Yeah. All right. Well, Ekin Car, check it out. Ekin Car, check it out if you want. If not, then don't. Please don't. If you don't. And if you're, <laughs> but otherwise, if you're, check it out. If you're near, <laughs> if you're near our online neighborhood, Q to A. Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, Facebook.com. Facebook.com forward slash QDA podcast. QDA yeah, Twitter. At QDA podcast on Twitter. Check us out. And, uh, and we'll you next week. what are we going to do next week? What do you think? Oh, geez. I don't know, man. Let's put a bunch of names in a hat and pull one out. I know that uh, this is 23. Our 25th episode should be uh, 9 11 Truth. 9 11 Truthers. Um, I got a. I met a guy um, who's like a yoga instructor. He's going to come on. We're going to do an episode about what is yoga? Yoga is very mystical. So it's so it's so mystical. It goes back a very, very long time. It's so mystical. <laughs> Handed down to the generations. <laughs> so, yeah. Verbally. Verbally and physically and emotionally. But um, spiritually. But um, yeah, all right, like Dookie Royale. Royale. I gotta go. I gotta go. After these podcasts, man, I always drink this beer. I always have to pee so bad at the end. <laughs> so once again, I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta eat some food. Prepare for another day of work tomorrow. Oh gosh, don't remind me. <laughs> all right then. All right. Have a have good, good one, Dookie yeah. Royale. And cheese. See you next time. Later. Next week.